Jesus Christ. Stop complaining oh. about your back, you old man. I am a fucking old man. Okay, welcome back. <sighs> Come on in, Basel. How's right. it going? A bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a caution for the rest of this case. I want you to have an open mind. I want you to, like, think outside of the box. Think you have, like, the most crazy, insane fucking murder plot possible. That's what you want me to do? Yeah. Okay. Phoenix did it. <laughs> now, actually, I think Phoenix has committed every single crime to make himself look good. Okay. He has meticulously planned out everything. Now, planted evidence. Yeah. Has commit has killed everyone just so he can have a perfect record. Okay. And when do you think he's gonna get like caught? Never. There are forty cases in the series. Uh, well, Phoenix cases. Number forty. Number forty. Okay. He goes away. Okay. I suppose that I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I was showing up a body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force in my lower body. It makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the Beamaster's head. I guess it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Hmm. I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bus and stick himself out far enough to look. At the mention that he could uh, not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. Hmm, that's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stunned! It's same for really. Yeah. I can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. <gasps> Holy shit, I know who did it. What? The birds. The fucking birds did it. Fuck. Oh my god, the birds did it. Oh my god, it was supposed to be a surprise at the end of the case, dude. <laughs> Fuck! I guess we would just continue. I suppose I could have lifted something that si the size of that bust. Have you ever lifted up the bust before? No, I've never actually lifted it up with my own two hands. But I should get to it, don't you think? I can't let money outdo me on this. Money? That crazy monkey has lifted Max's bust before? Hmm. <laughs> Please continue with your testimony, Mr. Dingling. I was showing up a body from walking as an acrobat and only my legs were injured. So what have you been doing to keep in shape? Well, honestly, I've given up on training. I don't have any plans to pretend to the trapeze or the tightrope. You don't say. But, no offense, but I'm worried about losing to you in a race or anything. Neither am I, Mr. Phoenix Knight. I wouldn't lose either, slow poke. I mean, Nick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How did the discussion turn to me all of a sudden? I suppose you could say that I'm shorter than the average bear. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. And why is that? Because if I were to do that, I'd end up falling out of the window myself. I still haven't gotten much feeling back in my legs yet. Hmm, so you couldn't have thrown that bust out of the window. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force in my lower body. How long do you think your recovery will take? Hmm. You have to remember that my nerves were severely damaged. I'm currently undergoing some extremely intensive rehabilitation. I, but it's still gonna be take a while before I'm back to 100%. Let me remind you of another very important point. If the witness was killing the bust... If the witness was killing the bust, he would not have been able to uh, see below, see out below the window. This is impossible for me to have known the location of the remaster's head. Why do you say it would be impossible? Allow me to explain. 
<laughs> Except that if I was carrying the bus, I couldn't see out below the window. Thus, there's no way that I would have known the location of the remaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick. Huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe if you think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the remaster's head, then he could drop the bust. That does make sense. <laughs> if only I could prove somehow. That Acro knew the location of the ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. That's it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? If all you had to do was drop it, then it wouldn't have been a problem <laughs> at all. You gotta drop it. That's all you gotta do. Drop it like it's hot. Mm. Drop it like it's hot. And all I had to do was drop it. Like it's hot. You're right. I could have done that. However, there was no way that I could land a direct hit on the new master's head. Hmm. So that kind of makes your theory a bit pointless, doesn't it, Mr. Wright? Uh, you fucking old bastard. Acro strong enough to lift up the bust? The main problem is how he could have aimed for the remaster's head. Hmm. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh oh, shit! My <laughs> plan is working now. Thank God I sent the birds to go and kill them. What are those fumes? <laughs> what are you doing to me? What oh, fuck. I <laughs> forgot. Yeah, um, I'm doing this like whole like uh, social experiment thing where I'm like. I have like a pipe that goes to my car's like, uh, exhaust pipe and it comes all the way through this room. Goes through the ventilation system. I think that it will give me like a more like of a, a groggy voice. So I can do like Mo and other people like that. Bomb Palmer or something like that. Oh shit. My back fired. <laughs> Got him back. <laughs> I wonder, if, powers. I wonder if you use some kind of tool to aim for the ringmaster. That's the ticket, Nick! Show him what you've got! I have to be careful. I have to find something that fits perfectly with the case. Hmm, I don't remember us finding any sort of tool, but maybe we overlooked something. Alright, what do you want him to do? So there's something that he used to force it out the window? No, the, uh, the concern is that, that he pushed the, 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 the bus out of the window. He's saying that, yeah, I could have thrown the uh, bus out of the window, but how could I have been accurate? And hit him. And hit him on the head. Right. Okay. Uh, so, like, um... Uh, it makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the remaster's head. I think... I don't know if that's true. Because, it, like, say that they knew he was gonna be by that box. Then you would know. So he used the box to, like, as a way? So, like, the ringmaster didn't bring that box, right? No, the box, the box, was, box there. was there. The box was there. So he knew that the ringmaster would go to the box. Okay. Which would then give him a very good idea as to where he would be and where his head would be. <laughs> Acro, you didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection. You're silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling! How about you show us some evidence? But... But I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means... that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down, 
was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You, you mean? If the burst were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. No. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. And there's only one way to go from here. Forward. You can't, there's a desk in front of you. So the next question I have is, who replaced that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Let me the rip some sits to you! Ow, Mr. Me. Phoenix, right? Ow! 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 His head could have uh, been anywhere when he lifted the box! That's why the box was so specially made! S specially made? Indeed! It had the most peculiar feature. The, well, the contents were peculiar. It's just fucking pepper shaker. Yeah. Uh, the weight? I don't remember. Mm. Can we look at the record? Uh, it's 20 pounds. 20 pound box. Yeah. Wooden box sounds normal. Small but strong lock. Yeah. Alright, go back. I mean, I mean, I, maybe the weight is peculiar, I guess? The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Phil. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Y you Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright might, may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Oh, 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 oh. The original location. Oh! Oh, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. I remember. Of course you do. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Yeah! yeah. yeah. I actually like thought it was the cafeteria. <laughs> I actually did, but I was like, why would that make sense? That, that's what I was remembering. Because, you know, uh, Mo said that Max wanted us to, uh, wanted everybody to, like, uh, bow down to his greatness. And, like, every time they eat, they see, like, his, uh, his accomplishments. Gotcha. Yeah. <sighs> then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how could I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ah! That is exactly how the witness could have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep. We definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. 
I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. All right, Mr. Wright. Let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? Monkey. That's all you need to say. Monkey. A monkey! Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist ring. So, are you saying the witness had the monkey steal the best? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? But the best was Blondes, wasn't it? Blondes isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. <laughs> yeah. Acro! Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bust back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Order, order, I said order, Miss Von Kaiser. Where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, um, uh, I, um, I don't know. They're searching for it as we speak. Hmm. This is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as a murder weapon. Hmm. Wait. Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we're more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer! Noran! Mr. Wright's argument was circular. I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! That seems so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You forgot the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Yeah! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let him beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? Oh. What did Mo see instead? Who did Mo actually see? Well... If we're saying... Well, we're saying Acro's the murderer, but she obviously doesn't think Acro's the murderer. Well, because she's the prosecution, she thinks Max did it. That's their job. Right. Well, I don't see why she would press this. All this is doubling down. I mean... The murder of the clown saw... I mean, we think it's Acro. But it can't be Acro because he can't... You know, yeah. that, that wouldn't work. So who? So yeah. It's. I mean, it, there wasn't. I don't think there was an actual physical person. I think it was the, the bust. He saw Max's bow. I asked who was the other person most saw the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. 
Au contraire, mon frère. It indeed does have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It would be easy to hang one of the cards in the bust hands. Idiots! Who in the right bank would uh, put a cloak on the bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust! Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is one of the utmost importance to this case. Don't you agree? Toy oh, caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? Who put the cloak on the bust? Mm -hmm. Like of everything that's happened, where, where was the cloak at the time? Oh, you know, fuck. I think of the journey of the cloak. Oh fuck, the journey of the cloak. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't know so, the journey of the so cloak. So where did it start? Cloak started. I have no fucking clue. I don't remember the the timeline of the cloak at all. Where did the cloak okay. start? The okay, at the start of the day, okay, Max uh, hit uh, Ben over the head with a bottle, okay? Okay. Where did he go next? Uh, to practice? No, this was after practice. Oh, okay, he went to his office? To Russell Bowie's office to okay. talk about the incident, okay? Yes. He was wearing his, uh, his costume attire there. Yeah. But, but, but then he put it on the wall, okay? Okay. So, then what happened next? What happened next? Yeah. Max. Did the show? No. This is after the show. This oh, is right, after practice. Right, this right, is right, late right, night. right. Then Max. Oh, shit. Russell Berry and Max. Oh, are in oh, the, oh, oh, in the oh. Room. There was like. Russell Berry and Max are in his office together. Don't they get into like. Oh, the contract thing. Right? That was a week ago. Fuck. That was his lie to. But, uh, but to, well, I know, thought that he was debating his contract with them or something, right? They got they, into an they, argument. They, they already did. Okay. The argument between Ben and Max was over Regina. Okay. The reason Max went to his uh, to uh, to Russell Bowie's office was to talk about the conflict and also to propose to Regina, basically get his. Uh, and that was the day of the murder, the night of the murder. That was the night of the murder. Okay. So Max is talking to Russell Berry. Yeah. About wanting to be re yeah. with, and, re and with, with Regina. His cloak and his hat are on like a coat hanger. Yes. Okay. Then what happens? Oh, fuck. Well, he leaves, right? Who does? Max. No. Max Russell is, Berry leaves. Russell Berry leaves and takes the cloak and the hat. And the cloak and the hat. Okay. And why does he take it? He takes it. We don't know why he did it. Okay. Okay. He goes outside. Okay. And who sees them? Sees him? Who sees him? Uh, oh, he goes outside and he's seen by the puppet and, and okay, Woody. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say that that person is wearing the hat and the cloak. Oh, my okay. God. So, and then he gets to the scene of the crime. What happens? He gets to the scene of the crime and then the bus comes down and hits him. Okay, and then what happens? And he dies. Okay. Thank you. Fucking crazy. So why was the cloak on the bus? Who put the cloak on the bust? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who put the cloak on the bus? Yeah. Well, the only person who was out there, who Mo witnessed it. Yep. Mo could have put the cloak on the bus. No, he wasn't outside. He wasn't outside. The he was in his room. The puppet and them were outside. They were in front of the entrance, not in at the lo uh, not at the the lo uh, lounging lounging lobby place. Wait a minute. So who was the only person there? Russell. So who put the cloak on the bust? 
wrestle. Wait, what? What the fuck? To fool him? You're saying it was the victim himself, Russell Barry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all this? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What? Oh, whoa. Is Russell Berry alive? Uh, then whose body is at the coronary right now? Moe's. <gasps> Russell Berry dressed up like a clown. <laughs> you think they would do that twice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. Uh, maybe. I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. All right. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time! Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than the ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bus hit the victim, You just read the second there, Mr. Phoenix, right? As much as you try, as much as you scheme, that just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. What? The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. That impact also caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bus being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bus up. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. You see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro! It could only have been you! Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? He's graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? E evidence? 
In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Look, they say they want evidence. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there's still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. You said I can get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. Okay. So what was the contradiction of what Mo saw? So that screenshot of the silhouette. Yeah. You know, looking down at the victim. Okay, what is wrong with that? That the hat was left there. The problem is Max has three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the red roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bus. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you got one. But what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said that the witness right roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no right roses. I'd like you to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course. I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. What a This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Maybe Von Kummel will finally throw in the towel. Well, so much for that, baby. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive! This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the Green Master. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the Ringmaster! Hmm... Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Aqua's story. You learned about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. <laughs> what do we do? Let's not tell me that Aqua deeply respected the Ringmaster. Aqua's motive. Hmm... It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel it's a good place to take a break. 
I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a 10 minute recess. And we hear about his story in, in the, the next, next episode. Modern Fossil, thank you for joining us. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell, Do comment all that below. Stuff, please. Uh, can I make the next episode the finale? Maybe. I don't know. But until then, goodbye. Ah. Ah.